Hi, I'm Leah, and I'm joined by Tim from London Institute of Contemporary Christianity. Um, thanks for joining us, Tim. Um, can you just share with us a little bit about what London Institute of Contemporary Christianity does and what your role is there, please? Hi, Leah. Yeah, of course. So LICC exists to help Christians see how they can make a difference with God and for God wherever they are, not just in church, but at the school gate, in local communities, on streets and on Zoom calls even. Lots of people spend on a good week, maybe up to 10 hours doing church based activities and that's good and that's a great way to serve God. But at LICC, we like to think about the 110 hours in the rest of your week um, that might be opportunities to serve God too. And my role at LICC is to help the Institute engage with emerging generations. So loosely, that's 18 to 30s, although it's deliberately a bit fuzzy at both ends. Basically, anyone who is uh, moving through studenthood or becoming a graduate and into their first decade of working life is my focus. Love to meet and help those kinds of people uh, and engage them with LICC's mission. That's great. Um, and just a couple of years ago, um, the young adults uh, were referred in the church as a missing generation. Um, what role could sharing our faith in the workplace change this um, change for this reality? Yeah, you're totally right. And there's some really good research that's just come out from Barna and World Vision that suggests over 70 percent of young adults raised in a Christian home in the UK have given up on the church by the time that they're 30. Um, so that's a challenge, definitely. But it seems also like young adults are looking to their careers and their work for a sense of meaning and purpose that maybe previous generations would have found in church or even in affiliation with a political party or even a family. But all of these institutions don't look the way they used to. So work and career have taken on this new meaning and this new significance for people. And I think that means that um, there's a really fertile ground for Christians to show up in the workplace with a sense that, yes, work is meaningful and yes, uh, to work well and show up with a purpose really matters. But we're never going to find that in our work. We can only find that in God. So I think there's a there's a conversation to be had there. And um, my vision, really, my dream would be that the workplace becomes the most fertile mission field for the church in the next 10 to 20 years. I think it's doable within our generation. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Um, and for some people, sharing your faith in the secular world can be a hard thing. Um, I knew when I was working in the hospitality industry, this was something I struggled with. Um, how can we begin to start um, looking at it in an effective way? Yeah, sure. Well, um, you are probably more of an expert on this than me if you worked in hospitality. Can I just ask a little bit about like what you did and what you found hard about working in the hospitality sector? Um, I worked at a conference centre, so it was just, you didn't see people for very long, so how do you start those conversations and move it forward quickly enough that it will make an impact? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, I've got a really good friend who is in hospitality herself, and um, I know she wrestles with this too, although she's so full of life and so bubbly that I think there's something about her that um, stands out, and that's 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 probably the um, where to begin, is are we living out our faith in a way that is distinctive or different or even just provokes curiosity in the people around us? Um, often we might be rubbing shoulders with people who have never met a Christian before or perhaps have a very uh, low view of what a Christian is or what Christians do. So I think just firstly, um, freeing ourselves of a lot of baggage that we can sometimes have when we think about evangelism in the workplace can be a really helpful way to start because actually the pressure is off and um, if you just smile and are nice that can be the first best way to open a door and that's I think in a way just as glorifying to God as sharing the gospel message if the opportunity arises um, and there are also different contexts with uh, which we interact with people. So yes, there may be a customer who walks past you in a queue or you serve and perhaps a smile and a kind word is the only meaningful engagement that you can have with that person. And by all means, take that. But then there are also going to be your work colleagues or people that you rub shoulders with on a more regular basis. Uh, and there's probably an opportunity there to go deeper with those kinds of people in talking about our faith and 
what difference that makes to our lives in a way that might make a difference to their lives as well. So I have kind of three guiding principles in my mind to have better conversations at work. So maybe I can share them and they might be helpful. The first one, um, and these are all, by the way, stolen from the Gospels because it's just what I see Jesus doing. And I think he's a master at spiritual conversation. So just I've stolen from the best. First thing is to be present with people when Jesus is in front of someone talking to them it seems like they're the only person in his world that matters right then he's just totally present he shows up he listens in a way that seems to really get behind what the words are that someone might be saying to him into understanding what the real question is that they're asking or what the real thing that they're wrestling with is where their real longings are and we can only get that with people if we show up present with them if we're willing to listen you know put away the smartphone just it's buzzing in your pocket just turn off vibrate just keep, just keep your phone off vibrate at all times that's probably a good principle to start with but yeah so being present with people and listening in order to understand and and, and hear them hear their stories as someone loved by god and made it in his image is that's the only way to start so that's the first one be present the second thing is to be curious and i think um we can all get a lot better at asking questions. Jesus, again, absolute master at asking good questions and helping people sort of reflect on why they might be asking the question that they're asking or where they're coming from or what their own answer might be to a question that they're asking. So questions are good, I think, because it just gives um, the opportunity for that person to think things through for themselves, to come to some conclusions which they might own more strongly if then if I just told them what the answer was so um, for example uh, an exercise that we sometimes do is think if someone comes to me and asks hey why would a loving God send someone to hell or why does a uh, uh, loving God allow suffering if I charge in with an answer and that person has just had their uh, mum die of cancer then I'm going to totally miss where that person is coming from so to ask them uh, thank you for your question. It's a really good one. I wonder, what do you think? Or could you tell me why do you ask? It just involves that person in the conversation and invites them to open up a bit more. Um, Rico Tice has a really good strategy for asking questions, which is to try and ask a question that crosses the line. And uh, it doesn't mean that in a way that's going to offend anyone, but it's just a, a chance to take the conversation a bit deeper when you ask a question. And you can even initiate a conversation with a question as well. I find a good one is, was there any spiritual or religious background to your childhood? And especially at this time of year, we're recording this at Christmas to ask people, hey, were Christmas carol services a part of your childhood when you grew up? It's just a way to ask a question that might take things a bit deeper. But Rico Tice's advice is, hey, if, if they clam up, you clam up. That's fine. You don't have to keep going. But if they open up, then you can open up and keep going as well. So practicing curiosity by asking questions is a really good thing. Be present, be curious. And then lastly, is to be brave. And I think a lot of the time um, I'm a bit worried about what people might think of me if I reveal that I'm a Christian. But to show up and talk about what I actually think, what I actually feel, what difference Jesus actually makes to my life or the way that I see this issue through the lenses of the gospel is actually a really great way to show up in conversation and bring something of myself that the other person might be able to bounce off or ping off. And of course, you can say, that's what I think. What do you think? I find that um, sharing stuff around films or books that I've watched and read is a really helpful way to do that. Have have something out there that you can talk about, but I can bring myself to it and say, I watched this film at the weekend. I just found it really powerful and it touched me in all of these ways because it, it resonated with the way I see the world. So it's all about having spiritual conversations, not trying to get people across some sort of arbitrary line, but just opening things up and seeing where it goes. So be present, be curious, be brave, share something of yourself. Those would be my three guidelines that I try and live by. That's really helpful and I'm sure everyone will be able to take something away from those three pieces of advice. It's great. Um, for some people that are watching and joining us this evening, um, they might have only started their role in September. Um, is there any advice that you have for them that are just starting that, that could be um, added to those other three pieces of advice you've just given? Yeah, of course. Um, I think for young adults in the first decade of working life, the 
biggest kind of threat to their sense of self and the quality of work is imposter syndrome. And uh, I've, I've asked some older people if you ever really shake it off and they don't seem to say that you do. So I think learning to live with imposter syndrome or not let it master us is a really important thing to wrestle with, do business with. And uh, fortunately, the gospel has a lot to say to our imposter syndrome. I love Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 10, where it talks about um, how we are created by God, we're saved by God, and he's prepared good works in advance for us to do. And um, I think that's a real antidote to imposter syndrome, because firstly, it kind of acknowledges the truth of imposter syndrome. Yeah, actually, I didn't get here by my own effort. I've kind of not fluked it, but I've been I've been blessed by many opportunities and situations along the way that have got me to where I am now. And actually, I'm just grateful to be here. That's what a kind of godly perspective on my situation might be. But also, um, God loves me in that place. Um, I am his workmanship Ephesians 2 says and uh, he's prepared good works in advance for me to do so okay on some level I might be an imposter but that doesn't mean that God doesn't want me to be here and that doesn't mean that I don't lean into the work that's in front of me on any given day which could be even as simple as writing an email could be leading a meeting it could be writing script anything you want these are things that God's put in front of me to do and he trusts me with them and if God trusts me with them, then there's no need for me to doubt myself or um, feel like I'm an imposter in any kind of way. So, I mean, that's quite a quick answer. It takes a long time to wrestle through this kind of stuff. Failure is a great opportunity to learn about uh, yourself and who you really are and what really matters and how much God really loves you, even when things don't turn out the way you maybe hoped. But also learning to do success well as well is important and owning that and uh, seeing what you can learn from it, celebrating continually practicing being grateful to God for putting you in that situation is a really good way to do business with imposter syndrome. So that's one main thing. Other quick bit of advice I'd say is if you can find any other Christians in your workplace, great, connect with them. You probably need to let people know that you're a Christian enabled uh, to, in order to be able to do that. Um, lots of people move house when they start a new job. So getting plugged into a church is super important. And lots of people will agonize about which church should I join? It doesn't matter. Just go to your nearest church where you can get stuck in, where you can be needed and known. I'd say that's good advice and get that community around you who can support you as you make the transition into professional adulthood. That's great. Thanks, Tim. Um, um... The, you guys at uh, London Institute of Contemporary Christianity run sessions and have loads of resources to encourage Christians in the workplace. Um, is there any thing about those that you'd like to share and where people can find out more? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, first port of call is probably the website, licc.org.uk. There's plenty on there to discover and uh, have a route around, see what you like the look of. For young professionals particularly, we've got uh, a few resources and, and events that are worth just putting on people's radars. So firstly, we have a resource called Rooted, which is for graduates making the transition out of university life into working life. We'll normally run that as a series of webinars in June. If you just Google LICC Rooted, you can register your interest for that. Um, we have an annual conference called Rework, which is for Christians in the first decade of working life. And it's just a chance to touch base with other people in the same boat, get a good bit of input, think about what kind of uh, habits and mindset would be helpful to make the most of the situation God's put you in. Also a bit of mentoring opportunities in that. And then uh, we also have a programme called Emerging Leaders, which is for young adults who are stepping up into first time management and team leadership roles to think about how uh, they can show up at work and take the lead, even if they haven't got loads of hierarchical kind of positional authority, you can still take the lead and make a difference for God in the culture of the workplace that he's put you in. So we've got loads of good thinking, biblical wisdom, uh, kind of secular business tools that we intertwine together on that course. And uh, that's going to be running in 2021. So search LICC Emerging Leaders if that floats your boat as well or anything else, just get in touch. Um, you can contact me, my emails on the LICC website. That's great. Thanks, Tim. Um, and hopefully everyone would have taken away uh, something um, to put into their work um, going forward for this year. Um, thanks for joining us. It's been great. Appreciate it. Thank you.